Today's lesson, section 7.1b, uh, Trigonometric Identities. Um, we're just going to continue on from what we were doing um, in the last video, uh, verifying the following equations. So just these ones, it just you need to see them more and more to kind of get a good feel for how to deal with them. Uh, so I just have like three more of these that I want to show you so you can kind of get used to seeing them and then we can do certainly more in class to get a better feel but here I just want to kind of give you as many examples as I could possibly give you so uh, so letter A you have cosine of u over one sine of u equals secant u plus tangent u okay now actually I want to give you some tips here so um, with these how I like to um, um, verify is um, I always try to put things into terms of sine and cosine or um, if I see that there's a Pythagorean theorem that I can use or implement I'll try to insert that in somehow by um, using some means um, that's appropriate um, I'll also um, I always try to put fractions together unless it makes sense to take them apart. Okay, so you kind of just have to work with these enough to kind of get a good feel for the direction. Now, there's not always one direction um, with going some of, with some of these. Sometimes you can take multiple like um, thought processes and you can still get to the same spot using different uh, approaches. So it's not one way or the highway kind of thing it's more fluid than that so um, keep that in mind when you're looking at these and you're checking with your um, classmates okay so for letter a I have cosine of u over one minus sine of u now here like I was talking about if I can find a place where I want to insert a Pythagorean identity I want to try to do that because it usually makes it simpler so looking at the bottom I have one sine of u now in the last video if you remember that um, one of the problems we multiply both top and bottom by kinda like the conjugate the one plus sine of u for these and then that made you have one minus sine squared and then you're able to insert cosine squared because that's a Pythagorean identity so here I want to do the same thing so let's take um, to the top and bottom and multiply it by 1 plus sine of u because that's kind of like the conjugate for 1 minus sine u so if I multiply those out I can get cosine of u plus cosine of u over sine of u okay and then on the bottom if I multiply that out I get 1 minus sine u plus sine u uh, minus sine squared of u okay and so then I can cancel out the sine of u and the negative sine of u okay so that gives me cosine over u plus cosine of u sine of u over 1 minus sine squared So like I was saying here now, that's a Pythagorean identity. I can insert in cosine squared. So now doing that, I have a denominator that's not a binomial, which makes it easier to deal with generally. Okay, now also, oh, it looks like I forgot something here. I need a plus sign. Okay, so how about I make that a little nicer. Okay, so now you want um, your secant and a tangent and they're added to each other. Now, this time, because they're separated by addition, you might want to take the two things at the top and separate them into two fractions and see what happens. So, 
because I also noticed that in the num numerator and the denominator, everything has a cosine. So if I separate everything and maybe reduce, I might get what I want. So I separated. Okay. Now I can reduce, so cosine cancels out there, cosine cancels out there. That leaves me with 1 over cosine of u plus sine of u over cosine of u. Now last time I looked at the reciprocal identities, 1 over cosine of u gives me secant of u. And then sine over cosine is tangent. So now I got the same thing as what was on the left side. So check, I'm done, okay? Next one. So I have one plus cosine theta over cosine theta equals tangent squared over secant squared theta, or secant squared minus one, or secant, sorry, secant theta minus one. Now here, it might be interesting to know that um, you can actually work with both sides at the same time. Okay, um, so let's say um, on the left side, it's a fraction, so maybe splitting it up might help simplify it because they have a cosine. So um, if I separate it into two fractions, okay, it gets me that. Now also on the right side, I have tangent squared theta. Now, tangent squared is a part of a Pythagorean identity, which is the tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. So if I subtracted 1 over, tangent squared would equal secant squared uh, theta minus 1. So and I notice that in the denominator of that fraction on the right side has a secant theta minus 1. Remember that that is a difference of squares. Okay, so maybe if I factor that, I could get something to cancel out as well. So let's insert that in. So secant squared theta minus 1 over secant of theta minus 1. Okay. Now on the left side, 1 over cosine theta is secant theta plus cosine divided by cosine is 1. So then the left side looks pretty simple to me. And then if I factor on the right side, I get secant theta minus 1 oh, times secant theta plus 1. And so now I have a secant theta minus 1 and a secant theta minus 1 on top and the bottom. So I can cancel them out. And so what I'm left with is secant theta plus 1 on both sides. Okay. So maybe sometimes working with both equations is helpful in um, getting what you desire for both. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Okay. So I have tangent squared u minus sine squared u equals tangent squared u times sine u squared u. Okay, so here, now it doesn't really matter which way you go sometimes. Um, maybe let's start with the left side. I usually choose to go with the left side, but you could start with the right side and make it the left side and it'd be the same process. So um, let's say tangent squared u minus sine squared u. Now one thing I was saying before, make things in terms of sine and cosine usually is a good first step. So tangent squared is the same thing as sine squared u over cosine squared u. Okay? And sine squared is already in terms of sine and cosine, so I just leave it alone. Now since I have a fraction, I like to make my fractions come together. So let's multiply by cosine square to u. Okay, so then that gives me sine squared 
u minus sine squared u times cosine squared u over cosine squared u. Okay, so now um, notice that the top is a binomial. Okay, they both have a sine squared of u, so maybe just maybe I could factor them out and then see what I got left. So now if I take a sine squared of u out of the first one, it's a 1 minus, and then it would be a cosine squared of u. Okay, well, doing that, 1 goes makes your uh, expression come from a, a binomial where you're subtracting two things to now you have a um, a multiplication problem. Even though there's still a binomial inside the parentheses, you're taking that binomial times something. So now you're getting closer to the tangent squared u sine squared u because it involves multiplication, which is what we want over here. And then also, if you notice, out of that factoring, I got 1 minus cosine squared u. So I can insert in my Pythagorean identity because sine squared u, or 1 minus cosine squared u, is the same thing as sine squared u. Okay? Now the last thing is, because I want tangent and sine, okay, now I have stuff that's multiplied, I don't have any more subtraction, which is nice, I can reorganize what I'm doing here so I can make because it's a fraction and it's all multiply I can move stuff around and say that it's sine squared over cosine squared times sine squared over 1 that would be the same fraction and now I can just simplify so sine squared over cosine squared gives me tangent squared and sine squared over 1 is just sine squared. So now I got this same exact thing on both sides. Check. Okay? So hopefully these um, examples help you kind of get the process. Remember, um, you want to look for Pythagorean identities. You want to try to put things in terms of sine and cosine. It's always good. Um, put your fractions together. Or when it makes sense, separate fractions, because maybe your other side has a plus sign. Um, a good note is if one, like if you're trying to make one side um, into a side that has a plus or a minus, it would be good to um, separate fractions. If your side has multiplication on it that you're trying to get it to be, it's always good to put fractions together. That's a good first step. Um, but yeah, and it doesn't matter which side you start with. Um, just know that you you could have different uh, ways of doing the same thing and still get the same answer. Okay? Have fun.